The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if a brother or sister sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. So, should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue our season of Lent, we return to the theme of prayer in that first reading from the prophet Daniel. We have a unique situation there because Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Israel and had captured these young men, Azariah, Mishael, Abednego, and he then had a great idol constructed 90 feet tall of gold and had ordered everyone in the entire kingdom to bow down and worship the idol whenever the music was played. Well, this was anathema to the Israelite Jews who were captured, and they refused. And they confronted the king to his face and said, we will not bow down. The king was enraged and ordered them to be thrown into the fiery furnace. So here we have the prayer that they are praying in the midst of the flames. So they're in the fire, and we see this wonderful prayer of abandonment to God. And notice what they do. They appeal to God's covenant that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob way back in the patriarchal narratives so that God would remember his mercy to those great patriarchs. And they say they stand in their shadow and that they're willing to die. In fact, they're willing to be a sacrifice. They're willing to give their lives in the flames in place of the temple sacrifices, in place of the temple, because the temple had been destroyed in Israel, they're now willing to be that temple sacrifice. They see themselves as an offering, a burnt offering, for the sake of the rest of the people and for their own sins. So it's an amazing abandonment of prayer where they're saying, well, we will offer our bodies in view of the lack of temple sacrifices since it's been destroyed. These are young men. They have no family now. They've been captured. They're being wooed by Nebuchadnezzar to abandon their faith. And they're going in the opposite direction. They're saying, we will actually now become the temple sacrifice. Now that's the prayer that we hear. God responds, how could he not? When a person is willing to abandon everything and become a sacrifice to offer their whole lives, God responds. And they are saved. And not only are they saved, but Nebuchadnezzar, who's witnessing all this, sees that there's a fourth in the midst of the flames with the three. And it happens to be Christ. 
And now Nebuchadnezzar realizes that this, in fact, is the God that he should be worshiping. And he acknowledges that. And he raises up the three to high positions in the kingdom. So that's the power of being willing to sacrifice and abandon to the will of God. It's a prayer in Lent that we are invited to take seriously in our lives and be converted and say, I will offer my life, whatever God desires. I will conform my will to God's will. And I'll put to death whatever I'm hanging on to that's sinful. Now in the gospel, Peter is being confronted by Jesus and Peter thinks he's doing a great thing by saying, I will forgive seven times. Jesus says, no, seven times 70. An infinite number of being willing to forgive, and that means being able to sacrifice one's own will, just like a burnt offering. So let us conform ourselves to this high standard of life where we become sacrificial offering to the Lord for the sake of others for the sake of Christ, and that requires grace. We're going to receive it today in the Eucharist. Let us acknowledge that, be grateful, and say to the Lord, I offer you my life in sacrifice. May it be accepted according to your will.